fantastic. How are you doing? Oh, I'm so excited that you was here with us today. I tell you what, Captain Chris brings us a wonderful, wonderful story every single day that he comes. But um, I, I just want to let y'all know that his books, Adventures of Peter the Pirate, has just went best-selling in the whole wide world. It's the number one in all the best-seller list of all the pirates. Do I got them on the Amazon wish list? Peter the Pirate. That's the name. So are you ready to do your, your Peter the Pirate? Uh, Peter yes, the Pirate book? Yes, I am. All right. Let's hear it for Peter the Pirate. All right. What's going on? Wait a second. What's going on? Where's the book? I seem to have misplaced my book. Peter the Pirate book? Wait, hold on. Let me go over here and look. Approximately 45 seconds ago. <laughs> we lost it 45 seconds ago. What you gonna do about it, Mr. Police Man? Well, did you steal it? I ain't gonna steal that book. I am a Christian. I'm not a heathen. I'm a good Christian. Did one of you steal it? Did y'all steal the book? I think I sense a lie. One of you stole the book. I don't know that Joshua Hamburger right there. He looked pretty guilty. He looks guilty. Too. Look at them as some games. They smiling awful big. That's all. But hold on, get your cake crusader on the phone. Who you getting on the phone? Who you talking to? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, um, Batman. I'm gonna need your help with this one. Batman! Boom! Yeah, Batman. Um Yeah, okay. Perfect. That Burke Macklin, I'm real, real scared we ain't gonna find that book because Mr. Burke Macklin, he don't look like he got everything together. So anyway, we're gonna have the Boys Against the Girls Bible Game. Here is our girl, Velocio Raptor. Hello, girl, Velocio Raptor. Come on back in the... Oh, there we go. And all the girls wave guy. Hello at the girl. All right, and here we go. For the boys, we have a minion. The big mama's gonna ask some questions. All right, I hope y'all can see everything. All right, boys, it's the minions. Minions, got to turn this way, minion. Hey, minion. All right, girls and the boys. All right. I have not asked a question yet. Why are you? I'm gonna take minus a billion points if you do that one more time. Do not do that one more time. Don't you, don't you do it. Don't you do it. I'm between a minion, I'm between a minion and a block. 
is not correct. Minions was not one of the plays. I'm just kidding. I'm playing with the minion. He answered right. He said, oh, what'd you say? Locusts everywhere. And the boys take two for the lead. All right, all right. What was supposed to happen in the 10th play? What was supposed to happen in the 10th play? 10th play, last play. Girls, let's see if they got it. Look, come on, talk to me now, talk to me now. Yes, the firstborn is gone from the first play. Girls two, boys two, girls two, boys two. All right, for the win. Let's see, for the win, for the win, for the win. What animal did they have to sacrifice to put the blood? Ah! A lamb that goes All right, do a little praise dance, girl. Do a little All the girls, y'all here to get up. We're going to do a little bit of praise dance. Ready? <laughs> Can't find the book. Oh, oh, you almost gave me a heart attack, Captain Chris. I'm sorry. Where's the book at? It's in your hat, Captain Chris. Oh, that's where I left it. All right, please enjoy a story time with New York Times and Pirates bestseller, Captain Chris. Well, thank you. How's everyone doing today? Are you doing good? Yes, this is fantastic. Okay, let's read the story. Adventures of Peter the Pirate. Peter the Pirate was so cool. He sailed the high seas and the ocean blue. Look at him right there on his boat, just doing his thing. One day a storm came and it was scary. Even Peter said it's kind of getting hairy. Peter knew there could be no delay, so he knelt down right then and started to pray. The wind stopped and the waves did too, and he saw an island before even saying boo. As Peter got closer, he heard a roar. He couldn't believe his eyes, for he was looking at a dinosaur. So he walked right up and said hi. Then he got a shock when the great big dino started to cry. So Peter said, what's wrong my friend? And the dino replied, this pain will never end. What do you think's wrong with the dinosaur? That's when Peter looked down and he saw a thorn that did not mess around. It was stuck between the dino's toes and it was the cause of all of his woes. You see the thorn down there, it's not very pleasant. And it was the cause of all of his woes. Peter closed his eyes and pulled it out quick. Then he jumped out of the way when he saw the tail flick. You don't want to get flicked by a dinosaur. It's not very pleasant now, is it? The dino was so happy that he said, thank you. Oh shucks, said Peter. It wasn't anything you wouldn't do. That's when the dino replied, Wanna meet all my friends? I would want to meet dinosaurs' friends if that was me. That's when Peter nodded and he knew that this tale was not about to end. And that's to be continued. Next time you'll learn about the dinosaur's friend. Well, thank you all for listening to me. Thank you so much, Captain Rex. Wasn't that an awesome story, guys? Woohoo! Yeah! So, um, this is a little awkward, but we just got reports that Big Mama Barry went to go take a nap. So, I guess I'm gonna be your host for now, so we're just gonna keep on rolling with the show. So at this time, they're big, they're fluffy, they're black and blue, we got some sumo wrestlers. Now, what we're gonna do now is you're gonna have to get up off your seats again, because we're gonna go to some crazy. 
praise and worship. Come on, everybody, we're going to take over. We're moving forward together. Everybody hands up if you know that you're moving to another level. We're not living in fear no more, but yeah, we're taking up the mantle. The way you long down the mantle. The need to strength up the battle. Hey, hey, Jesus, we surrender. The Lord, you take over. The Lord, you move in. You are Jehovah. You're my everything, yeah. We are your people. Let's go all the way. 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 Let's go
some worship now. You see how this goes? Okay. This is a little weird, isn't it? A little weird day. I, I think it's fine. I think it's fine. All right, we're just going to roll with it. We're going to praise Jesus. And we're going to have fun, okay? All right. What song should we sing? I don't know. What song should we sing? Um, all right, we'll sing, a, we'll sing a fan favorite, okay? What a beautiful name. All right? All right, here we go. Egypt. 
and nine times Pharaoh said, I'm gonna let him go. And nine times he said, nope, I go back on what I said. I ain't letting him go. But this time was different. This time Moses says, the 10th plague is gonna be worse than all the other plagues. Listen, Pharaoh, you don't want this plague to hit. I promise you, you don't want this plague to hit. It's a whopper of a plague. There's nothing that's ever been like it before or since. Listen, Pharaoh, your parents, your grandparents, your great-grandparents, none of y'all have seen a plague like this. And then when Moses told Pharaoh, he walked out. The Lord told Moses to go and talk to all the people, just like I'm talking to you this morning. He said, tell all the families to take a beautiful little spotless lamb and kill it and put the blood on the doorpost. So all of a sudden, all of the Israelites were putting the blood all over the doorpost because they wanted to make sure they listened to everything God said because this plague, the 10th plague, was going to be worse than anything that they had ever seen. This is what the Lord told Moses. Tonight, I'm going to go through all of Egypt and I'm going to go in but I won't come into anybody's house that has blood from the lamb on the doorpost. But while I'm doing this, okay, while I'm doing this, your family has to stay inside their house. Nobody can leave the house that night because I'm going to send myself, I'm going to send the Lord in. And if I see the blood on those doorposts, I'm not going in there. But for the ones, the Egyptians that didn't have the blood on the doorpost, I'm going to go in and I'm going to snatch their firstborn. I'm going to take their firstborn away from them. So at midnight, all of a sudden, the winds begin to pick up. Doors were rattling. And all of a sudden, out of the silence of the night, all of a sudden they heard the Egyptians start crying and wailing because they looked and the angel of the Lord had come through their houses and taken their firstborn because they would not listen when God said, let my people go. They were all crying because their firstborn, their firstborn sons, their firstborn daughters, their firstborn animals were all gone just like that. Now listen, guys, we don't have to sacrifice lambs at all anymore. Okay? We don't have to put blood on the doorpost or anything like that. But I want you to know something. Jesus is the blood on the doors of our hearts, okay? When angels pass by us, they can actually see the blood of Jesus over our hearts because he sacrificed himself for us. Not only that, guys, when we accept Jesus into our hearts, it means that we are safe and we are going to heaven, just like the Israelites were saved that night. The Passover story has been, listen, passed down and told for 2,500 years. And tonight, tonight, y'all, say tonight. Yeah, tonight, 2,500 years ago, all over the world, people will be reading this story to their children because the Lord told Moses, you better tell everybody to tell their children and their grandchildren and their grandchildren's children about this story and tell them all that I did for you to deliver you. God knew it was important to y'all to know this story. So you can one day tell your kids about 2,500 years ago when they put the blood on the doorpost and the angel of death passed by. And that way you can tell your kids about how the blood of Jesus is over your heart. So guys, I want you to bow your heads and pray one more time right now as I have everybody come on up so we can all pray. And we just wanna thank the Lord real quick. Everybody bow your heads. And we're going to pray right now. All right, Hannah, you go ahead and start. Mm -hmm. Lord, I just thank you for Alive Kids of Grace. Lord, I thank you for the uh, message that's been brought forth, Lord. Lord, I just ask that as they go throughout the rest of their week, leading up to Sunday, Lord, that you would just press on their hearts, press on their minds, Lord. 
Lord, that we're, we're reminded that Easter isn't about an Easter basket or Easter eggs, Lord, but we're reminded about the true sacrifice that it was, Lord. We're reminded today of how important life is. We're, we're reminded today of how important life in you is, Jesus. So, Lord, as we worship you and we think about you through the rest of this week, Lord, and we glorify you, Jesus, Lord, that you would press on our hearts, press on our minds, and let us to see the seriousness of this. But, Lord, also help us to see the joy that is found and the fact that you've given us eternal life through you, Jesus. Lord, I thank you, God, for what you're going to do. I thank you for how you're moving, even in the midst of our circumstances right now, Lord. You are just so amazing, God. All right, Luke, go ahead and pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for all the children watching at home. I pray, Lord, that they would not be afraid of what's going on in the world today and that they would just spend time with their, their family and their parents. And uh, I just thank you for all the, the children watching right now. All right, Chris. Dear God, I thank you for these kids today, God. I thank you for them choosing to come online and get to know more about you today, God. I pray that as we go out through our day, we try to be more like you. In Jesus' name, amen. And Aaliyah. Lord, I just want to pray for the kids right now, just for peace to come over them if they're feeling any fear right now, and for them to have just good times with their families while they're at home for a while. And tonight, as you talk to your mom and dad, I want you to think about Pharaoh, and you can even act it out. You can even ask mom and dad to read that Exodus story, and dad can be Pharaoh, or grandpa can, and then maybe one of your brothers or sisters, or you be Moses, and you say, Pharaoh, God says to let my people go. You can reenact the story. You can talk about it tonight. But there's another story that I'm going to talk about really quickly right now. And that is Jesus' death. Today's Thursday. And tomorrow, tomorrow is when we begin to celebrate. And we begin to celebrate Jesus' sacrifice. When he died on that cross. And he was buried and he was put in a tomb. Do you know what, guys? He didn't stay in that tomb. On Sunday, on Sunday, he began to raise up. Breath entered in his body. And he came back from the dead for you and you and the Prices and Bridget and the Cuslos and the Asungays and the Pinnells and the Deerbergers and the Joneses and the Hoots and the Arsenals and Crystal Borden's crew for all of you guys. He came back for all of you so his blood can be put on your hearts. So we're going to bow our heads one more time. And I want you to say this out loud. Okay, bow your heads and repeat after me. Say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you for coming into my heart. Thank you for dying for me. And thank you for coming back. All right, guys, we thank you so much for joining us today. We're going to talk a little bit now. So if you want to, don't unmute yet. Don't unmute yet. Make sure you hit the mute button.